Y'all, it is 2025, and what I'm going to do this year is rebuild my home lab. Now, the reason I'm going to rebuild my home lab is mainly because I want to save a little bit on power and really just to get back into the learning, plus I want to try something a little bit different. I have two giant servers sitting in my garage, one's a 2U and one's a 4U, and they are about 10 years old, so they are power-hungry little guys. And it's time for me to kind of upgrade things. Get some more modern equipment and just really set the home lab up the way that I've always wanted to. While my home lab works great the way it's set up, I really just want to learn all of that over again. And I'm going to bring you all along with me. Now, what I did and why I said I want to go a little bit smaller is on eBay, I went and looked and I found five of these guys for about 250 bucks. They did not come with hard drives. But they did come with 8 gigs of RAM. I was able to get some 8 more gigs of RAM for them. So I got a total of 16 gigs. I put a 500 gig SSD and a 1, a one terabyte M MVME SSD also in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the first thing that we need to do. And that is install Proxmox. So let's go ahead and jump over to my desktop so I can show you how to download Proxmox. And we'll get into it. First thing we need to do is go to proxmox.com. I will put all the links in the description or all the links to any place that I do go in the description below. But like I said, it's proxmox.com. Once you are on there, you're going to click downloads. And you are going to look for proxmox ve.8. whatever. Um, right now I am looking at 8.3. We will see it might change in the next couple months, but if it does, I'll update this video. Now I have already downloaded this ISO. So I'm going to show you the next step for what we need to do. We're going to need a USB stick. Uh, 16 gigs will be plenty. And we're going to plug in our USB and then we're going to download a tool called Rufus. And it's going to be just Google Rufus USB. The top one will be Rufus create bootable, bootable USB drives. I will put this link description, but it is Rufus.ie. Scroll down. Do not click this download button. Click this one, the 4.6 EXE. It is a very quick install. And it's done already. I'm going to type in Rufus. And you'll see that it's an EXE. Over on your screen, it will pop up where it says yes. Or do you want to allow this to make changes to your device? Say yes. And you'll get a pop-up like this. Next thing we want to do is select our USB that we just plugged in. I know this is the correct one because I just installed Debian on that one a couple days ago. And we're going to leave it disk or ISO. I'm going to go select and we're going to look for our Proxmox. I've got Proxmox 8.3. Click open. We're going to say OK and we're going to do start. It's going to tell us that we're going to delete all the stuff that's on that USB. So make sure this is the USB that you actually want to delete stuff on. Because once you don't, once you do this, it will be written over. We're going to click OK. This will only take a couple minutes. And with a little bit of power movie magic, I will see you when it's done. All right, y'all. So now that is done and it says ready. We're just going to go ahead and click close and pull out our USB stick. Now that we got our USB, we're going to plug it into our new Proxmox server. We're going to plug it into a USB port. Make sure that it's got power. You will also need to make sure that you have Ethernet or an Ethernet cord running to this so it can get Internet. It needs, a, it needs an IP address and you need to be able to talk with it. So once we get that USB plugged in, we're going to press power. And I'll see you over on that screen. Now it should automatically default and open up to the USB. If it doesn't, then you'll need to look at the BIOS or probably press like F6 or F8 or F10, one of whichever your device takes to get to your boot drive or your bootable devices, or you can change it inside of your BIOS. But once we are on the install page, we're just going to do this with the graphical interface. We're going to press enter on our keyboard. So you will also need a keyboard plugged up to this, but down here in the bottom, you're going to click I agree. 
we are going to select whichever hard drive you want. Click next. We're going to select our country, our time zone. I am Amer I'm in American Chicago. So pick whichever time zone is correct with yours. So that would be central time. We're going to give it a super secret squirrel password. This is for our root. And we're going to put a valid email address in there. You have to actually do a valid email address. And we're going to click next. We are going to give it a name. I'm going to call this one pve0.local. And you do have to put the .local on there. For me, I'm going to select a static IP address. But if you want, you can just use default. And then we're going to click to install. With a little bit of movie magic. We will. I'll see you when it's done. And we have install successful. Now it's going to do a quick reboot. You can. It'll tell you to please remove the USB. So go ahead and pull that out. It's going to pop up on this screen. Just let it sit there or you can press enter but it normally boots up pretty quick now we have got pve0 login we can actually log in right here and get the root or command line but we're going to go ahead and go over to the web page or the gui of that so let's go over and jump on my desktop now that we're back over here on our desktop we're going to set the other keyboard to the side. We're going to grab this keyboard and swap my mouses. And we're going to navigate to that 10100 or whatever IP address you have on there. That one dot 200 or two port. So port 8006 and hit enter. You're going to get your connection is not private. Go ahead and accept this. We know that it is safe because we just installed it. So we're going to hit advance and proceed to the IP address. We're going to go ahead and put in root and that password that we just created. You will get a you will get a no subscription. That is perfectly okay. We will work on that here in a second. We're going to click OK. Now we have Proxmox installed. So what we need to do is actually install updates. Make sure that everything is good to go. Now, one way that we can do that is come right here to shell and go apt get update. We'll go ahead and run through those things. But if you look right down here, it says failed. So if you want to see how we can fix that, go ahead and jump over to this next video. And I will see you on that next one.